How you doing? Mm, mm, how you doing? How you doing? Yeah. Hey, 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 hey. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Deliberate Millionaire stream. How are you doing, my loves? How are you doing? How are you doing? How are you doing? We're looking at ditching the employee mindset. I was actually having a conversation with somebody earlier. And um one of the things that came up towards the end of the call was this recognition um, that we've all been programmed in some ways to think a certain way, unless you were one of those like natural born entrepreneurs, which I definitely wasn't. In fact, when I mentioned being in business to my family, they thought I was slightly loopy and did that. Like, I couldn't do such a thing because I was more of a book kind of person, you know, more studying and finding the cure to AIDS or something, basically. So, so yes, I was, I've never been a natural born entrepreneur or anything like that. However, and, and for some of y'all, that's going to be the case. You were not, you, you weren't brought up in a, a world where business was normal. You've come to it now because you recognize that the only way you're going to be able to um, create a freedom lifestyle is by being in your own business, okay? And you want to live in your purpose and you want to live in your on your own terms and you want to create money, you want to create multiple streams of income. You recognize you want to be in a business, but some of y'all are going to try to bring the same thinking that maybe gave you great success as an employee, but will not give you great success as, an, as, a, as a business owner, okay? But you don't know it because you don't know what you don't know until you know, right? <laughs> And that, that goes the same with all of us, you know, we've been programmed to, to, to follow, to follow instructions, to be told what to do. And we've accepted this as the, that's just the way life is. And the problem comes when, yes, as I said, you're trying to transition into your own business. And I'm Rosemary Nonny Knight, by the way, in case you don't know, I am the prosperity minister and also a business coach to ambitious spiritual people who are determined to thrive, to prosper, to make at least six figures whilst living in their purpose of coaching, healing, course creating, teaching, that kind of a thing, advising, all of that. You have a message, you have something you want to bring to the world and you want to find a way to actually create an income um, through it. You're finally ready to do this. That's another thing when I was talking to this person today, she had to have, she had to get her head around the fact that she's allowed to make money whilst using her own gifts and her own skills and her own expertise. Some of y'all struggle with that. And that keeps you stuck again as an employee. <laughs> Um, when really you would love to be your own person, have that freedom lifestyle, and you can create it, but we need to get rid of certain ways of thinking. Now, we're going to start with our affirmation. I come out on top. I am a champion. I rise. Okay, we're going to sing that once through or so, and then we will get into the conversation around the various mindsets that just need to be dumped. Oh, but first and foremost, take a deep breath and release. Deep breath and release. And release all tension. Let it all go. When you breathe in, just breathe in the love of the divine. It's all around you anyway. Allow it to shift all the noise, the nonsense, the drama that is plugging you up. <sighs> I come out on top. I'm a champion. I come out on top, I'm a champion. I come out on top, I'm a champion. I come out on top, I'm a champion. I rise, I rise, I rise, I rise. I come out on top, I'm a champion. I rise, I rise, I rise, I rise. I come out. I come out on top. I'm a champion. Let that be what you say. I remind yourself of this week. It's our affirmation for the week. I come out on top. I am a champion. Okay. So looking at these ideas, looking at, let's think a thing, think, think, think about the, the mindset stuff that you just need to dump if you are going to be the business owner that you want to be. Okay. For one, for one, for one, you need to get out of your mind any idea that there's something wrong with being in business as a spiritual person, okay? Get rid of that thinking. Get rid of that thinking. There is no more room to even harbor that kind of thought. I don't care how right you might think it is, uh, how guilty you might feel for wanting to be in business and make a heck of a lot of money whilst making a heck of a lot of a difference. You just need to dump that idea. 
dump it, dump it. <laughs> you are allowed to create wealth using your giftings, using your expertise. You are allowed. The divine is not holding anything back from you. The divine does not need you to play small. The, the, the divine, you know, the divine is not, it's up to you. If you want to prosper in your purpose, it will be a choice that you make. The divine isn't withholding or giving anything to you. You are the one deciding whether you're going to believe what you've been mass mind programmed to believe, or you're going to allow yourself to prosper whilst living in your purpose. And for some of y'all who are actually actively building businesses, but they're not growing, check in with yourself as a spiritual person. Is there a part of you that feels as though you are not supposed to be doing this? And so either you start giving things away for free, you are way too available because you think you have to be in order to be a nice, good hearted um, spiritual person in business, you need to handle that stuff because you will unconsciously be sabotaging the growth of your own business and won't even realize that you're doing it. That's the thing. Again, when I'm speaking to clients, sometimes you're so in your own little box, you do not realize just how much you're holding yourself back. And it's time you started to notice if things are not working the way that you feel that they should be. Sometimes we go dig in deeper than we need to when really the answer is quite obvious, but because you're looking in the wrong place, like you're thinking, oh, maybe the divine doesn't want me to be in business. Maybe I am going against divine will. And so when you think that, instead of looking for an actual reason for your business not to be growing, you are telling yourself it's because the divine doesn't want it. And so you, are, you can't, you, your actions will be trying to appease the divine when actually the divine is not doing anything to you. <laughs> When really, maybe it's simply because you haven't priced it right, or you're calling in the wrong people, or you know, there's just some strategic something that you're not doing, but you don't look there because you're busy thinking to yourself, I need to appease the divine, I need to make the divine happy with me because, because I'm, maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this at all. You are. You have a vision, you have a desire, and your desires are literally safe guidance. Your desires literally are, they're, they're there to point you in the direction of the life that you're supposed to actually be living. So if there's, if there's any part of you that feels guilty about living the life that you really want to live, honey, question the beliefs under that guilt rather than questioning whether you should be doing this thing at all, <laughs> okay? That's one big major thing for spiritual people, particularly this idea that you're not supposed to be in business or not supposed to make money whilst um, doing God's work or something, you know, enough, enough, enough of this thinking. It is literally eating you alive for goodness sake okay some people are claiming or calling are in the financial realm some people i'm not really sure what that means have a calling in the financial realm which is good great great that's fine um if they do <laughs> enough yes enough enough of thinking that kind of crazy thinking and decide i am going to succeed whether you're called into the financial realm or you're called into some other realm whatever i choose to succeed let that be your, your praise. I come out on top. I am a champion. I rise. I rise, okay? Now, another, another employee mindset is the whole thinking that your security comes from a job, okay? Or steady paycheck, uh, the steady paycheck, ultimately. And I understand you have bills. You're an adult. Why is my eye itching? But <laughs> um, you're an adult. You have bills. You have maybe you have children that you need to look after. You have all of that kind of stuff. And so there's a part of you that wants that security. I get it. But honey, your security does not come from your job. Your, your, your security is in the divine. Your source of abundance is the divine and you, okay? Now you may choose to be in a job. You may choose to be in a business. You may choose to get an inheritance. You may choose to win the lottery. You may choose it. So, you know, money can come to you from all kinds of ways. But the source... And if, this, if you do not want to live a limited life, the source is your connection with the divine, not the job, okay? The job is not your source. So hold it lightly and focus on what you actually want. Embrace the idea, and it's, it is a calculated risk in some ways, embrace the calculated risk of being in your own business of trusting yourself, okay? Trusting yourself, trusting the divine. I get it, I can feel, and I'm not saying be, be irresponsible, 
because yes, building a business, if you've listened to me for any length of time, you know that I say um, business growth is extreme spiritual growth. So building a business is not the easy option by any means. It isn't, which is also why people kind of stay in the jobs, which is fine. It's not the easy option. However, it is the option that allows you more limitlessness. If, that, if, there's such a, if you could say more limitlessness, it allows you to break past the income ceiling that you might have set for yourself. It allows you to live according to your purpose. We live in such a blessed time where we are, where, yeah, we, I can reach any of you from anywhere, as long as you have an internet connection, wherever you are in the world. It is such a blessing that we can do this now, but it still does take courage. And when you have been programmed to think a job is the way, the only way for me to make money, then it is an interesting battle to be in business and stay in business when it does, especially at the, in the early stages where it doesn't look as if it's working as well as your job was. Then it's like you, there's a part of you, and, I, and I, you know, when I'm working with clients, I would say to them, there's no rush to, to dump the job, okay? So I'm not saying anybody needs to make any sudden moves here. But I am saying that your security is not in anything external to you. Your security is within you and your connection to the divine. I, I point that way because I always see in myself as sitting in the divine, basically, and the divine all around me. So he's like that. But, <laughs> but anyway, you need to understand that if you're going to live that expansive, that what I like to call the free, fulfilled, financially abundant, love drenched life, the chances are that you will have some kind of side hustle or some kind of business because that, that, those are, are multiple streams of income. For you to live that financially abundant life, you do need multiple streams of income, guys. For most people, especially the employee mindset, it's focused on, I'll do my 40 years, although these days, is it even 40 years? <laughs> I'll do my 40 years and then I'll retire with hopefully a good pension. But you're depending on something ex external to you and you think that's safe. You think that's safe. It makes no sense that you think it's safe, but you do. And so what generally tends to happen to people is that they live a good enough life if you have a great career. If you have a great career that pays well, then you live a good enough life, then you come to retire and you're broke and you have to tighten your belt. You have to live less. So that's most people, not everybody. Some people are wise enough that they invest in things, and, but that is also an entrepreneurial mindset. Whereas a, a, an employee mindset is depend on the job, depend on the pension, depend on other people to keep you safe it is not going to work <laughs> it is not going to work you are the source of your abundance you are the source of multiple streams of income okay you and the divine you connected to the divine that's your source and when and something else when i'm working with clients i want them to deepen their connection to the divine why because it gives you a sense of safety and then you're able to take the risks that that as an just as an employee you'd be afraid of taking. You'd think, oh, it's just me working it out. Oh my God. And yeah, you should be afraid if you think it's only you, <laughs> frankly. But when you realize that you're supported by the universe, that life supports you. That yeah, life is, is literally, all of life is created to support you. Okay, when you really know this, and you're feeling that safety inside, then you can take the appropriate risks that need to be taken for you to grow, for your, for your income to grow, for you to grow. As I say, business growth, is extreme spiritual growth really and having children is another one <laughs> okay okay you have to leave this concept and a lot of people know this one where your uh, the employee thinking is i do this many hours i get paid this much i do this much so this hour pays me this much and there's that linear idea around money whereas as an as an employee as a business owner you need to start thinking in terms of how can i what can i create that can then keep making me money over and over and over and over again. A book, a piece of art, even <laughs> um, music, um, you know, a, a coaching program. Um, you, there's different things that you can create once and allow it to make you money lots and lots of times. As an employee, that feels impossible because if you're not present in your job, then you're not making any money. And we know this. We know this. But yet, how many people actually do anything about it? How many people actually take the steps to create those packets of value that can be sold over and over and over again? Because again, we live in a blessed time, a blessed time where you can 
create courses that can then be sold over and over again, create eBooks that can be sold over and over and over again. You know, these days you can self publish on Kindle, on Amazon or whatever, and, and keep making money from that book over and over and over and over again. It, there's so much um, opportunity that if you would leave behind your employee mindset, you would see that there's so much freedom to be found when your security is in your connection to the divine and in yourself rather than in the external world outside there, okay? That you can scale your income really quick and money can, in, can increase really quickly. Whereas time actually is a limited amount of time. We know this, we know this. Most people really have an awareness that time is valuable. But do they act as though they have an awareness of this? No. In the end, they just, oh, well, this is all I can do. It's all, you know, it's all I know. And, and then they stick with doing stuff. And even we spiritual people who are connected to the divine, and we know that we're powerful. Are you living as though you are powerful? Are you living as though you are connected to the divine? Or is it just talk? Is it just, oh, you know, I affirm this, and I turn up on my, my religious organization, and I sing the songs, and I raise my hands, and all of this stuff. But then when it comes to my actual life, I have to be realistic. And I have to be sensible. I get it. Yeah. I'm not saying don't be realistic and sensible. Well, I don't really like the word realistic or sensible. Truth be told. <laughs> because usually people are talking about common sense. Now, common sense, if, if yeah, it is common. But it commonly doesn't lead anybody anywhere. Anywhere that you really want to go. If you want to be the same as everybody else on the planet, then you carry on thinking like the same as everybody else on the planet. That's fine. You wouldn't be listening to me. Listen. Break away from the idea that you're, you have some kind of fixed income, it's only fixed if you refuse to do anything to increase your streams of income. So, because, you know, when I'm working with people, it's not that you have to immediately drop the job and you're going to just, you know, just jump off the cliff of entrepreneurship in three seconds flat. No, even I didn't do that. I allowed my income from business to grow as the hours that I was working as a pharmacist reduced, okay? And it was only when the business was making more than the pharmacy was making that I dropped the pharmacy, okay? And, and you can do it that way. Or maybe you actually don't mind your job too much, but you want an element of freedom and it's maybe not quite your purpose of work. So start a side hustle or something. Give yourself the opportunity to have scalable income rather than very fixed income. The choice is yours. Another um, unfortunate to me it's really unfortunate but for a lot of people hearing this uh, you, you anyway, it's up to you to judge however you want to but using credit as some kind of thing to be shamed ashamed of so credit or using debt the truth of the matter is that most people who have successfully started businesses and are now successful at it started by using other people's money because if you're waiting to have a surplus amount of money in your bank account so that you can then start your business, the chances are you'll die before that happens, okay? Because there's always something. There's always the car breaking down or the children need this or something. So you save up a little bit anyway. And then next thing is gone because this person got sick and this happened and the other thing happened and blah, blah, blah happened. And so you're saving for a rainy day and the rainy day will always come. So if you're waiting for surplus income to, to, be, to be saved up before you start your business, the chances are you'll be waiting a while or it will never actually happen. Whereas you recognize, okay, there's a good use of, uh, and I, I am a perfect example of this, where there's a good use of credit and there's a bad use of credit. Originally, I used credit badly because I was using it for consumable things that had no value once I've consumed them. And so, yes, I, I got into all this debt. I have no idea where the money is even gone. <laughs> Uh, well, I kind of knew where the money had gone, but there was nothing to show for it except lots of stress, lots of anxiety, lots of crying in my bed as I was pregnant with my first child and I'm wondering what the hell am I going to do and blah, 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 blah. So that is bad debt <laughs> for sure. But then with knowledge, with growth, I also have used debt to, um, to invest in myself, to invest in my business and to elevate. And so debt can be horrible if you decide that it is because the truth of the matter is if i knew what i know now even if i'd used the debt for stupid things i could have turned it around but i didn't know what i didn't know <laughs> until i knew basically so bankruptcy was the only solution i felt i had at that point whereas when now in building my business and using debt to create it i knew that i'm building something that isn't just going to be consumed once and done no 
as long as I'm alive, whatever I've invested in myself, it's, it, I can use again and again and again, even if I have to invest $99,999 to get, uh, to get 100K um, in one year, and then 100K the next year, and the next year, maybe even more and more and more and more, then you know what? I will invest that 99999 I will find a way to come up with that money. And that's what I did. And that is entrepreneurial thinking. Whereas middle class stroke, um, job security um, person is all about, oh no, I cannot use credit cards. I have to wait until I've saved it up and then I'll start my business. Yeah, 10 years later, they're still, they're still not started. I can't tell you the number of people because I've been in this business now for 10 years. I can't tell you the number of people I know who at the start of my working, doing this thing, we're talking about how they're going to save up and they're going to do it then. And you don't worry, Rosemary, I'll definitely come and work with you. 10 freaking years later, they're still saying the same, saying the same stuff. And some, some have the wisdom finally to realize my life is never going to change until I actually do something to change it. And some just continue telling themselves, one day I will have enough. But again, that's what you've been programmed to believe. And to me, to me actually, there's this middle-class trap where people with ambition, if you are not wise, if you are not careful, and if you are not leaning into the divine, if you're trusting the physical reality above yourself and your, what you intuitively hear from the divine, you will be trapped forever because you're waiting for that time when you have surplus income, but it never comes because it's almost like the, um, the physical reality is designed to give you just enough money. <laughs> Sometimes just a little less money than you need. And so your consumer debt keeps increasing. And so then you feel even more trapped by your consumer debt. Because you feel like now you have to, you, you now have to make sure that all of your money is going directly to paying off your consumer debt instead of investing in yourself. So you you hear the, the stories of like rich dad, poor dad person would say, you know, pay yourself first, put that first 10% to yourself, towards yourself, or more even towards yourself. But you don't listen to it. Instead, you pay every single other person out there first. So whether it is the banks, you're paying first. Whether it's the, the, your children, you're paying first. Whether it's your husband or partner or whatever, you're paying first. Your, your parents, your paper, you're paying everybody else and there's never hardly anything left for you. But you tell yourself that that's, that's the reasonable common sense way to do it. And if I, I still remember some, some person from one of my old churches when I was talking about the business that I'm growing and all of this and he was just like, well, and how much debt are you in? As if it was some kind of bad thing. And I just looked at him and thought, you're broke. <laughs> but he was asking me this as if I should be ashamed of the fact that I used other people's money to grow something so i should just keep waiting forever until i had surplus income and then i could start my business and he felt that this was the christian way to do things and and he was trying to shame me into feeling like i should not be in debt i should not have used debt to and i'm just looking at him and thinking honey please <laughs> i understand why you're programmed to think that way but it makes no sense what you're saying and if I wait until what the banks or somebody gives me permission to, to build a business, I will never build one. I will never live that free, fulfilled, financially abundant, love drenched life that I desire to live. So I ain't listening to that nonsense anymore. And you need to stop listening to that too. You need to start seeing credit as leverage, as something that you can use to, to, to increase your own income. I do not say use it to buy things that are consumable and you can never see again. No, I say invest in your business, invest in yourself but only after you've made a solid decision inside of yourself that, you know what, once I start this business, I am not stopping until I have succeeded and gone beyond what my original definition of success was. So if you're just dabbling at this thing, please keep your money. <laughs> if you're dabbling, if it's just a, let me try it for a little while and then see, but then no, what I'm saying here about credit, do not, do not go there. And for some of y'all, you have to trust yourself. You have been programmed, again, to not trust yourself, to listen to experts above your own self, that to trust that other people know more about you than you do. Even you're listening to me and thinking, I know more about you than you do. I don't. I'm just giving you ideas here that will support you in living in your purpose profitably. But it is a choice that you make that you are definitely going to live in your purpose profitably. You have to make that internal decision inside of you or else nothing I'm saying here is going to help you. Just doing it because you felt excited because Rosemary said to do it right now is not going to keep you going when business isn't moving as quickly as you would like it to and you're getting scared. 
at that point, you, all your previous programming will become more prominent and your new programming that you're trying to take on will be like, oh, that's just delusion. And you know, I'm deluding myself. I need to just go back and sit in a job because obviously I've failed. You haven't failed. You just haven't stayed the journey all the way through to breakthrough. <laughs> okay. And because nobody can tell you exactly how long it's going to take for your business to, um, to flourish. But I can tell you this, it will flourish if you refuse to quit. And if you use other people's money, make sure there's that mentality inside of you that says, I refuse ever to stop. Because I promise you, you'll be tempted many a time to quit. And then you'll tell yourself a story of, I shouldn't have used that. It was such a bad idea for me to do this. It wasn't a bad idea for you to do it. It was a bad idea for you to quit. <laughs> that was the bad idea. Actually, the knowledge that you gained in investing yourself or investing in your business, whether it's if you're paying for advertising or paying for marketing or whatever, that it was something that can keep, would have kept giving you money if you had stayed, of course, until you broke through. And this, again, the employment mindset, some psychologists, some whatever, give you all these biases and, and tell you how the, the idea that you can definitely succeed is it's, it's a bias or it's some kind of flawed way of thinking and it's a magical thinking or whatever. It isn't. Actually, building a business is quite, it's, it's, there's, there's steps to take that will get you a result. Nobody can tell you exactly when they'll get you the result, but you will get the result. It is as predictable as getting a job. It's just a job, it's a, a job it has become a more practiced path. So people are more familiar with that path you forget how long it took you to become an expert at the job. You don't hardly does anybody give as much time to grow in a business. They expect the business to start making money within the first week or two weeks. But it's like I was saying to someone today, uh, one of my clients today, um, a business is like a baby. You cannot expect a one month old baby to be acting like a 17 year old teenager or a 27 year old adult. And yet people, when they start their businesses, they have this instant gratification thing, which again is the employee mindset, because you go to work this many hours, you get paid this much at either every two weeks or every four weeks or every month or whatever. And so you've learned to have this instant gratification thing where I do this for this long, I get this amount of money. So when you start in business and you do this for this long and it doesn't give you that same amount of money, you immediately start to think I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm failing, I'm failing. You say it enough to yourself, enough times to yourself that finally you quit. And you tell yourself, I tried everything and nothing worked for me. No, you brought your employee instant gratification mindset into the business world and it didn't work as quickly as, as a job does. And so then you decided that must mean that it's never going to work for me. No, <laughs> you haven't even given it as much time as you gave your job. <laughs> okay. So <laughs> how dare you quit on yourself? It's because you've been programmed for instant gratification. You've been programmed to think, well, if A doesn't immediately result in B, therefore it will never result in B, so give up now. <laughs> You've been programmed as well to think that failing is, uh, or making mistakes, it's something to be avoided, like the plague, because that is the employee mindset. You want to get everything right. You want to be seen as, as the, you know, the top in your your little employee peer group thing. You want to, you want the, the bosses to notice you. You want to be unstoppable by everybody else's standards. But the truth of the matter is, if you're going to create a business, you're going to make many a mistake. You're going to fail a few <laughs> million times, basically. And you're going to have to pick yourself up and learn from it and move on. Find the gift in it and move on. You, every single time you fall down, you need to get up and move forward. And it will feel at times like hell, let's be honest. And that's why then you revert back to your old programming that says it can't, it, it's not supposed to feel like this. If it feels like this, it must not be of the divine. So let me go back to the job. Let me just quit altogether. That's the mistake when you decide to quit. But it's you that has made that decision, not because you've actually failed, but because you're, you've bought into the employee mentality that tells you that you're not supposed to make mistakes, that you're always supposed to get everything right. That is not an environment for growth. Growth happens as you make the mistakes. In fact, the more mistakes you make, the more likely you are, as long as you keep picking yourself up and you've learned the lesson from it or learn the gift. I don't like lesson as such. It's more of a gift because you learn how something doesn't work. You, you know, 
it allow yourself to make mistakes it's okay it's okay but again because we've been trained we've been programmed to believe that mistakes are not okay they are they are okay you're going to make them don't be scared of making mistakes allow yourself to make the mistakes because then you see what what needs the improvement and then you improve it and you move on again remember business growth is extreme spiritual growth for real it really is okay um this whole competition thing as well is an employee thing because if there's, there's there's one promotion and there's 20 of you that want that promotion you better be better than everybody else man you better do whatever is necessary to be to be seen as better you don't even have to be better you just need to be seen as better so that's where the whole competition comes in dog eat dog and step on anybody to get where i want to go or don't do so well at your job because you're not that kind of person and so you never get the promotion and you never you never kind of get the raise and all of that because you're too too nice to ask for anything and blah 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 i get it but then you definitely need to have your own side hustle or your own kind of business if you want to be nice in the workplace basically um and and instead there needs to be this whole realizing there's enough when you come into the marketplace you realize there's eight like uh, coaches okay yes a, a lot of people sometimes come to me and say oh but isn't the coaching market um saturated the truth of the matter is that you're surrounded by you're usually using social media and social media has its algorithm so you've shown some interest in coaching so all you ever see is 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 stuff from other coaches and so you start to think that the whole world is full of only coaches basically and <laughs> And, and that, that there's no space for you in the marketplace. It's not true, but that's the perception you get. The truth of the matter is that there's like 8 billion people on the planet and most of them are not being coached. Most of them are not, and don't have the, 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 the message that you have to bring. And so there is enough clients for you. And you realize that. You realize you start to take on an abundance mentality. There is more than enough for me and for everyone. This is not some kind of monopoly game where the money suddenly runs out and then we it's a zero-sum game and we, we're all out, so we have to... So if I get more, somebody else gets less. It's not, that's not the truth. That is what, in some ways that is teaching or that's programming that has been put into you to keep you small. Because if you're a nice hearted person, if there's, a, if you really do believe that by you getting more, everybody else is getting less, why would you want to get more? Why would you want to go for, for the, for the big life when you think that that must mean that somebody else's life is getting smaller because of your big life? Of course you won't want to do it. And again, I, I sometimes feel that some of these some of these insidious ideas that are given to us by the world, that whatever powers that be are out there, are literally trying to keep everybody contained, everybody small, so that you're all controllable. And we have to break free of this thinking. And Because I sometimes even think religion, I'm sure it meant well, because there were lots of maybe broken, poor people who, who needed some kind of idea that, okay, now this life is hard, but if you will just suffer through it the next life will be better you know and and, and so maybe it was a, as a comfort to people to begin with but now i look at it and i think it's just it just makes people play this small horrible game with their own life hoping that in the next life everything will somehow be better stop this stop this stop agreeing with this crazy programming that keeps you playing this small Silly little game. Wake up. There is abundance available to everyone. I don't care where you are on the planet. It's available to you if you will do what it takes to claim it. Everybody always thinks that somehow their story is worse than everybody else's story. It's not freaking true. I'm saying this to somebody else who came on the phone with me, I don't know, a few days ago, or whatever. And they, they always start, well, not always, but some people always, uh, they, oh, well, yeah, just don't have money. And, and, and I'm just like, yeah, yeah. Isn't that where most people start, where the business is from? You think people generally were sitting around thinking, you know what? I have lots of money sitting in my bank account, so I'll start a business right now. <laughs> Basically, no. Most people is because I don't have as much money as I would like. I will start a business so that I increase my money. So don't think you're some kind of unique unicorn <laughs> because you don't have money right now <laughs> or you don't have excess money right now. You get, you get to become creative. You get to become resourceful. When I started, I definitely didn't have lots of money. That's why I started, okay? <laughs> Come on. So this employee thinking that you have to have this before you can do that, that there's some kind of step by step by step by step by step thing that's going to that's how you're going to become successful and blah 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 listen yeah there are certain strategies that can help but in the end you're also going to have to learn to trust your intuitive nudges 
your your yeah that that your gut that tells you try to do this this way no not trying we don't try do this or do that which may go beyond so it's like when i'm when i'm working with clients yes i give you the basic principles of growing a business but then i expect you to trust yourself yeah yeah i can you can make suggestions to me and i say oh yes yeah that sounds great but then you have to learn to trust you as well Yes, work with mentors and coaches. I don't believe in working, doing this thing on your own because frankly, when you're going through dark times, particularly at the start, you don't know what to expect. So if you are not around someone who is able to tell you, honey, you're not a unique unicorn, <laughs> so it's okay. You, it doesn't mean that you're not going to succeed just because you're going through this particular dark time. If you don't have that around you, you'll quit and tell yourself, I tried everything and it all failed. It's a lie. You didn't. You just quit. <laughs> okay. So where was I? <laughs> Ultimately, trust you, not just following instructions, not just following some step-by-step -step something. Those things are good to begin with, but you don't stay there. You can't stay there. You have to trust your gut. Your business is going to look like you when you put yourself into it. Whereas again, as an employee, as a, going, through going through a schooling and everything, you've been programmed to be the same as everybody else to blend in your family, um, cultural uh, traditions as well, probably all trained you to play small, be the same as everybody else. Don't try to get too big for your boots. You'll get in trouble, blah, 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 blah. All of that kind of thing you need to put to one side. Because if you are going to live in your purpose profitably, then you're going to have to be all of you. This, because it, it demands all of you. It demands everything from you. Not this, I'll, I'll just, Give it a little bit of a test and see if it works for me. Nonsense. It won't work if you're coming at it with a, let me just try. Just don't bother. You will, you will not stay long enough for it to actually work. Not because it can't, but because you've come with the attitude that you're going to fail anyway. Okay? That, again, is employee thinking. If it doesn't happen instantly, it's, it's just not going to happen. Nonsense. Nonsense, nonsense, nonsense. The lack of trust of yourself, again, it is an employee mindset. Somebody else has to tell you everything that you need to do. So you're not showing any initiative. You're not showing any innovation. Come on. Come on. That is employee thinking, and it won't get you the six figures or more that you want whilst living in line with your purpose, okay? It's time to start, put that vision of yours top of mind. Instead of just working to just get by, now you're working to change lives including your own, to change the way you live, to experience more of this physical reality. There's so much more for you, so much more for you, so many things for us all to experience. We're not supposed to live this small, limited life, but employee thinking keeps you small. Oh, oh you get one holiday a year. Oh my goodness, yay, basically. <laughs> and I, I don't want to belittle it, but I'm saying that that's so small. There's so much more available to you. I'm not going to pretend that the journey is always easy because, yes, you are experiencing a paradigm shift. And that can feel quite, it's the emotional tension that gets most people. It's not the actual things you need to do. It's the emotional tension. And if you could just withstand that, if you can learn to lean into the divine, keep your eyes on your vision, love yourself, and keep removing any weird ideas that you have that are keeping you stuck in place, it is inevitable, as long as you keep taking action, that you, excuse me, will succeed. It's inevitable. It isn't an if or but or maybe. It's a definite. You are created for success. You are powerful. You are limitless creator. You are one with the divine. That same power that created everything you see and feel in the physical reality, it dwells within you and it is waiting for you to wield that power to create the life that you want. But employee thinking... It will keep you plain as if you are helpless, as if you are powerless, as if you have no choice in life. I like to call this stage one living. Well, that way you're a victim of life instead of a creator of life. You need to get to stage three. If you don't know what I'm talking about, stage one, two, three, you need to get a copy of my book, the um, spiritual business, uh, spiritual six-figure spiritual business book. The link is around this video. If, if you're anywhere apart from Instagram, Instagram, you need to look at in my bio. And get a copy of the book. And then the videos I show you, particularly the first three videos I send out to you, they tell you about being stage one, stage two, stage three, and what that looks like. Are you a victim of life? Are you a 
hustler for life or are you creating co-creator a practical mystic okay who allows life to happen whilst creating it all at the same time which one are you go listen to it you'll understand what i'm saying more but anyway those are some ideas around the kind of mindset you want to shift away from shift away from employee mindset if you are going to live profitably in your purpose and you can okay you can okay so i'd love to hear your thoughts i'd love to hear your thinking if there's any you know put it in the comments or anything even if i can't look at it today i can definitely look at it for a later point and do a live stream about whatever it is that you're asking or anything like that okay but go get a copy of the book the six figure spiritual business book it will give you a strategy for growing your business or your side hustle um for transforming lives and doing it profitably um go and get that yeah get it and as i say listen to those first three videos well there's actually I think I send you out a total of eight videos over the first eight days that you're in the community. The first three are all about the uh, activating abundance, so the internal work that is necessary to do that. As well, and then the next five videos are about the practical strategies that it kind of takes what I put in the book and brings it to life as well. So get, get the book, and you'll also get those videos as well. And they will really support you in starting to transition from an employee way of thinking to an uh, to an employer or a business owner or and a business owner mindset, because that's what you want. That is what you want. So as I say, get a copy of the book. It's the link is around this video or the link is in my bio. Until the next time, my loves, you are a champion. You come out on top. Let this be your reality. Let this be true for you, okay? It's your choice, the divine, Let's put you here to listen to me. If you, if what I'm saying is, res is resonating with you, it's because I know the divine has put you here to listen. But it's, it's one thing to take a camel to water. It's another thing to force that camel to drink. You can't make a horse or a camel or whatever to drink. So it's like the divine brought you here. But now taking that next step is up to you. It's up to you. Just listening and going away, feeling inspired for a second and then going back into your regular life and nothing changes is not going to change anything. Okay. So get the book. Take that next step. Okay. Okay. Until the next time, my loves, go forth and prosper. Much amazing love. Bye.